my honest take on the high dosing of vitamin D3 Coimbra protocol, well now it's about 3 years after. I started out on something called the Coimbra protocol in April 2017. Um, I'm just coming on to say hello, it's day 7 of the um, Dr. Coimbra protocol and I'm super tired, I woke up early, I couldn't get back to sleep. Because it's done in many different ways, but the main factor is that it starts above 40,000 IU of vitamin D3 according to the patient's response. I feel a bit more awake and better in my head, but still at the same time I struggle with the light. I've been out now and I uh, feel very dizzy because I haven't been out for a long time. But. It also helps to going out. Usually if I'm out like this to meet Tobias down at the station, I, I don't have energy or mental energy to focus on much. Usually it's 1,000 IU per kilo, but many times patients are put on several hundred thousand international units of vitamin D3. 2.6 liters of fluid is required as is a calcium restricted diet. If you have a high serum calcium or are suffering from hyperthyroidism, you will not be able to be on higher than 10,000 IU a day or preferably lower. I had some initial small improvements. I felt shortly better on 1,000 IU and escalated to about 1,000 IU within two to three weeks when my ears started singing with constant tinnitus and I felt horribly off. Then we slowly back to 1000 IU on a daily basis. I was not very happy about the diet because it was a very confusing diet of, of what was allowed food. So I gained weight from the horrible selection made by the Crane Breath team that was very frustrating to follow. Look at this list. Bread, butter, mayonnaise, pasta, rice, potatoes, cereals, corn. And then you have bananas and oatmeal. Everything is like a high carb diet. And then you have also gelatin, jelly, marshmallows, cakes, cookies, biscuits, etc. And those are on the approved list. And it's not very healthy if you want to sustain a healthy lifestyle. So. Yeah, I don't recommend this at all. <laughs> also, on their list they said that legumes were allowed but peanuts weren't. However, on two different tables, which required double checking. For sick and fatigued people who just threw a short look on the allowed list, this could cause confusion, including myself, and it wasn't very thought through. So that's why I actually made the book that could complement the Quimbra protocol because the food in the book does not have high calcium content and neither does it have dairy products, nuts or seeds. For me, however, this protocol didn't work because it only addresses vitamin D3 deficiency but overlooks important nutrients such as iodine, herbs and the whole B family and not just B2 and B12. Vitamin D3 is very important, of course, but the body needs more than just adding high doses of vitamin D3. In my current brain health studies, I have learned that there are essential B vitamins and neurotransmitters that our brains decline in as we age. Cortisol rises and depletes most of our balance. We also need to do ongoing detoxes. A sick body is clearly a sign of system that doesn't work and our livers will pay the price for that. The liver may not show up as if there is something wrong before about 90% of it is damaged. Thankfully it's easier to heal than other organs because it is the body's project manager for the waste system but it can take up to four years to heal it. This is essential information that the Coimbra protocol does not provide, inform or teach, thus the protocol is left incomplete. I would say I do not believe in one-sided protocols where you just treat one thing. 
the body has many hormones that needs attention. I reversed endometriosis, I am doing bioidentical hormones, I'm making sure that my insulin levels are balanced, I do check on the cortisol, I need to sleep. All of those things are so important. Not vitamin D alone and a few cofactors for helping the body build up immune system. You need to pay attention to all of these things, not just vitamin D. But here I'm talking only about vitamin D alone. Many protocol doctors are also just medical doctors and have very little information about nutrition and give zero nutritional advice about the protocol. A medical doctor means a physician who is trying to sell drugs. Drugs are made by big pharma, so they are pretty much their salespeople. But this is a nice side gig that can give extra income to a doctor who needs to look functional or wants to look better in their profession. I'm talking about doctors who are medically trained and then, for example, they are taking Coimbra protocol training, which is of course good to help patients with healing naturally, but these doctors do not understand nutrition. And then we have a problem, just like we see in the coronavirus situation, where there's no doctors who are trained medically, who understands to build up the immune system or how nutrition works. And that is the problem of the whole big pharma industry. And they also refer to the Wolf's diet in many cases. And I don't understand that very sick people should go fishing or for wild caught fish. Where can you find that these days anyway? I live in a country which has the highest export of salmon and I don't know where we get wild caught fish and if I live in the country that has the most salmon where would you get wild caught fish such as salmon? That is a very good question in itself and I am not gonna answer that because I would like to know as well. And also to address that a bit, farmed fish are raised on fish fodder that has been chemically manipulated. Just like the fodder for other industrial farm animal, fish is filled with mercury and mercury is also one of the main reasons for MS. Because heavy metals go straight to the brain and sit there and you can't get it out. And mercury is also the main attraction for parasites. Tingling arms and legs? Hmm. If it's not uncontrolled blood sugars, then you might want to do a parasite cleanse and maybe stay away from fatty fish. More on nutritional issues. Oxalates and greens are a big problem with walls and high doses of vitamin D3. I leave it up to you to research this. However, anyone who swaps from an unhealthy diet will notice effects on any type of healthier diet. That is pure science. I'm not against walls, but my point here is that I don't believe it's compatible with high dosing of vitamin D3 in the long run, and my point was merely that protocol doctors do not necessarily research what they recommend and if it's truly compatible with the high dosing of vitamin D3 diet. Which leaves me to the next point. There has been reported many cases of renal failure, and that is based on two factors. One is that the patient is elderly and is a wheelchair and has bad circulation and the other one is that protocol doctors recommend 2.6 liters of fluid instead of 2.6 liters of pure water a day, which are very different things. As Dr. David Brownstein says in his book, The Miracle of Natural Hormones, you cannot wash your kidneys with coffee or tea, paraphrased, you need clean water. Also, we have to take into consideration that coffee, tea and other caffeine-based beverages deplete our magnesium levels, as does stress. Talking about stress and anxiety, the fear of hypercalcemia due to high doses of vitamin D3 does not help the healing process. Since the elderly and the ones with a compromised immune system are more susceptible for hypercalcemia, I would personally not recommend this treatment for them. 
and I have heard that personally many times that those who are in a wheelchair and are elderly they haven't always been as successful with this treatment so I would rather do what I do on the Vanessa protocol go on lower doses take iodine take other treatments and get you balanced this Coimbra protocol is a one-sided protocol and it's not a balancing protocol but it can help in many cases for a certain time so I'm not discrediting the protocol but this is an honest review and critic of the protocol and that needs to be considered not lightly but seriously if you want to do this and there are so many people who go on this protocol and they're so positive and they hear all this good stuff and they are ambassadors for maybe two years and then when they start to understand that okay this doesn't really work and I think I want to try something else they usually get bashed from groups harassed mobbed and stuff like that from people in Facebook groups and I really don't want to go into that but yeah anyway next the sad truth about patients testimonies a great number of testimonials from the first edition of my book has been removed as their health has declined again or they have gotten improvements but at the cost of new symptoms. Heart attack being one of them, of a Cumbra protocol specialist and development of PPMS being another. So I'm not going to go into details of that but um... The people in my book who was in the first edition were on high doses on the Pumbra protocol and the people who are still in my book in the second edition who is on the high doses, they are not old people. They are not above 40 years old. So that's the fact. My final thoughts. I believe in reversing autoimmune diseases, and if there is a way in, there is a way out. That is always my saying. This is how I developed my own protocol, the Vanessa protocol. I believe that it can be optimal to have an opportune of vitamin D3 to our vitamin D receptors to optimize our health. I also believe that if someone has been on it for more than six months to one year and has seen some results but keep getting new symptoms and never gets well then it's time to do something else the body doesn't only have vitamin d3 receptors but receptors for hormones iodine and needs fine adjustments through different treatments i do not recommend high dosing of vitamin d3 above 40,000 iu or the combat protocol as a long lifetime regime Unfortunately, there are also no protocol doctors that seem to really know what they're doing, thus they are gambling with a patient's health, which I just discussed before. The first protocol doctor I contacted took 15 days to answer my email and forgot to answer what I asked about, so I had to wait a really long time again to get an answer. This is not optimal when dealing with sick patients and someone's health is at risk. This led me to, in my own programs, to have daily support for my patients, which also lessens the stress and ensures the patient when they are battling anxiety. My own condition. I am now a very different person and I still have issues with fatigue at times, but not anything like I was before. My brain works better. I can think and I don't get horrible tacks on my eyes or eye flashes or any of those things that I used to have. The results I have is that my endometriosis cyst shrunk drastically and the local doctors have taken notice. I don't have lesions in the brain which says that there is possible danger of progressive deteriorating disease. 
I also do not have MS as a possible diagnosis anymore. No clinical signs and no signs in the brain of that. But that is not only because of vitamin D3. It's because of the protocol I developed myself, which includes iodine, vitamin D3, and hormones, and knowing the body and a proper detoxification system. If you think this is a video review to bash Coimbra and his protocol, it's not. Actually, in the beginning of my book, I have written thanks to Dr. Cicero Coimbra for pioneering the concept of using vitamin D in the treatment of MS and autoimmune diseases. So I think it's much better to be on vitamin D treatment than being on synthetic drugs because that's harmful for the body. If you look at these pictures from the known psoriasis study that Coimbra conducted before the Coimbra protocol, you see that there are amazing results for people with psoriasis, but these are not on the Coimbra protocol, which starts on 40,000 IU of vitamin D and up. This video is clearly a review and my experiences with the Quimbra community, which is not himself, and also a review on how it worked in my life and what I've seen in other patients and the people that I actually had to take out of the first edition of my book. And of course, an honest review of the nutritional recommendations that is given for people on the protocol. As you can see, I'm very happy about doing my art and jewelry and painting classes. It really helps with trauma and releases you from the flight, fight and freeze response. So if you want to sign up for those classes, you can go to this link here or down below this video. So you see, I don't have time to have too many one-on-one -on -one clients even though I like to. I don't have that much time. But I would like to invite you to my vitamin D course where you can learn about vitamin D for your health. And in these days of the coronavirus where the vitamin D deficiency is indeed one of the main causes for the coronavirus deaths, it is very important to know what's going on in this world and what information are held from us twisted or watered down. So I'm delighted to present you my newest course about vitamin D. It's covering many topics like the four levels of vitamin D, detoxification, cofactors, not all supplements are created equal, iodine, Dr. John Cannell and vitamin D3 safety, vitamin D3 for kids, vitamin D3 for black skin, not all doctors are created equal, testimonies, Debbie's story, exercise, FAQs, and more. If you want to find out more and get this course for a limited special price, go to vitamindcourse.com or click the link below and you will get there. See you inside the course.